Hi, I'm Mr. Buckingham, and this video is on population ecology and growth. So we have a population of wild horses in southeast Oregon, and we have graphed out their population, and we want to know what is happening to the dip in their population. And that could mean bad things, or that mean could be a good thing, just depending on what we look at. So in this video, we'll talk about growth and how to calculate the size of populations. And there are certain factors that can limit or inhibit uh, some of the populations of organisms. Density dependent and density independent factors. If it's density dependent, so it matters how many individuals are in a given area, those are gonna be called limiting resources, food, water, shelter. Density independent could be just due to chance, so fire could be a density independent uh, factor. And then we can calculate the growth rate of certain populations. Uh, there are different strategies of uh, different organisms that they go through in their life, and the two of them are called K-selected strategy and R-selected strategy. And this one is associated, R-selection is associated with exponential growth, and K-selected is associated with logistic growth. And logistic is going to hover uh, around its carrying capacity, and that's a number, and we'll, we'll, I'll explain what carrying capacity means. And that is also going to be influenced by density-dependent factors. So for our selected species, our selected species are usually going to be small critters small organisms, and it doesn't have to be just animals, it can be uh, plants as well. They're going to have many babies, and they are not going to care for those babies. So limited parental care. And they are going to have a fast growth rate, or a high growth rate. And they're gonna go through these boom and bust cycles. So their growth rate and their, their population size is going to go up really high and then it's going to crash uh, depending on what happens. So boom and bust cycle. And they are going to be known as the weedy species. And case selected species are going to be larger organisms and they're going to have few babies and they're going to care for those babies for a longer time, so uh, good or longer parental care. And they're going to have a slow growth rate, and it's going to hover around their carrying capacity. So they will have some limiting resources, and they'll, lim they'll hover just around that carrying capacity, which I'll explain in a little bit. Uh, and they will be long-lived. So they're going to live uh, above five years age, anywhere from five to hundreds of years. Like some of the trees in California can live um, thousands, of, thousands of years. So those two different uh, um, strategies help organisms survive or not. Um, so a Fish could be an R-selected species and they'll have many, many eggs and a lot of those eggs won't survive and those fish don't have to take care of those babies. As opposed to elephants, they will have a few babies. It'll take them a really long time uh, to birth those babies and the elephants don't, will take, sorry, they will take care of those babies. So we can also put these uh, different strategies in a graph. So type one graph and this is going to be survivorship on the y so survivors survivors on the y and it's going to be time on the x so type one organisms on uh, many of the babies that are born will survive until they reach a really old age. So for humans, it's about 80 to 90 years old, and then we start to die and our growth rate starts to change there. Um, for type two organisms, they're gonna have a consistent uh, growth and death rate. 
So they are going to die the same rate when they're born as to when they get older. And then these type three at the very bottom organisms, so they're gonna be this oyster, will die off really quickly. Uh, and then a few will reach maturity and a few will survive into the older years. And we can graph it uh, exponential versus logistic growth. So the first one, exponential growth, this is a really fast um, gr excuse me, growth rate. So R is going to be pretty, pretty high. So that's going to be our R selected uh, individuals. And we could also have logistic, and that's going to be more of our K selected selected individuals. So we have a carrying capacity and what is a carrying capacity? That is going to be the maximum population size of an organism an environment can sustain. So that is going to be a, a, an exact number. So the logistic organism, so like the elephant will hover, the population size will hover around that carrying capacity. If we didn't have uh, the poachers who are killing a lot of the elephants, that would change. Uh, and if there, it was more wild setting, uh, those elephants would survive near the carrying capacity. So a carrying capacity could be limited by certain uh, factors in their environment. And those are mostly density dependent factors. So those factors could be, uh, let's say food water, shelter. They could also mean disease. So this just means in a given area, it's a different color, there are a certain number of individuals. Well, if that density starts to increase, that means there's going to be less food, there's going to be less water, less shelter, and there's going to be more presence of disease, which could potentially kill off a lot of the individuals. So that's why we see we have that first R selected, and then we have a slowing of that logistical graph. So this part here is going to be the logistic portion, and the carrying capacity is going to be up there. So density independent factors are going to be fire. It could be a flood. It could be the climate of the area. Anything that is mostly due to chance. And it could affect the population uh, pretty drastically. So instead of uh, case selected species hovering around their carrying capacity, it could all of a sudden just plummet. All right, so we can calculate some of these uh, phenomena happening or what's happening in the wild. And first, the size of a population could be affected mostly by the births in the area. So let's say these two horses uh, have babies and it increases from two to five. It could increase the size of the population, could increase, that should say immigration at the end. Uh, by immigration, so let's say another three horses come in and that will increase the population from five to eight. Or we could have a population uh, de size decrease and that's going to be from emigration. So let's say three leave, so went from eight to five. Or we could have some deaths, so some of those horses will die of old age, let's say. So it looks like the, the parental uh, horse died. So we went from five to four. So we can put some numbers to that and we want to know what is the rate of growth. So on your AP bio equations formula sheet, there are uh, these as for example, and we can use these to get certain numbers and manipulate some numbers. These look really daunting, but they are not. They are just a plug and chug. And the hardest part is knowing which number goes where. So we have d of y over d of t. So this first one up above, d of y just means change in something. Ch 
change in something. And d of t is going to be change in time. So if you have change in something over change of time, that's going to be a rate. In our instance, we're going to focus on population growth, exponential growth, and logistical growth. So some of the other um, uh, variables that we need to know. So B is going to be births. D is going to be deaths. And what else? Our max is going to be the rate of growth. And n is going to be the original population size. And I'm going to abbreviate. And what else we need? We k, which equals the carrying capacity. And I think that's it on this page. Yep, we got them all. So let's say that we have a population of five horses, and we notice that it increases. We're going to start with population growth first. It increases to eight, so three were born. And it looks like two died. So what's going to happen is our births are going to be b equals three, and our deaths equals Two. And let's put it in the equation. So d of n over the change in time. And the change of time for this one is going to just be one. It's one year equals three minus two. So that is going to equal one. That's the change of population over time. Really easy. So we can do that with exponential growth. And it looks like we already have dnm d of n over d of t, which, oops. Go back one, go back. Um, so it's going to be one equals, we want to know what our max is. And our max is going to be the rate of growth. And our original population, if you remember from the beginning, it was five. So I'm going to put five down. Okay. So we can divide both sides by five. And our max going to be 0.2. So that's the rate of growth. All right, so a little bit harder now, logistic growth. So if we're given a storing problem, we need to be able to take some of those numbers and plug them into the equation. So what is the rate of growth of a population of wild horses if the change in the population is 400? So the change in population, that is going to be d of n equals 400 in 200 years. So the change in time is 200 years. The original size was 200. So that's n equals 200. And com carrying capacity is 700. So if we put all of those in our equation, you can do this with me if you want for practice. I highly recommend it. Equals r. And I kind of simplify. 200. 700 minus 200, and I have really sloppy handwriting. So all of that will boil down to 2 equals r, and then we put in parentheses 142.86. I warn students about rounding too early. Um, I, for a general rule, will round to the hundredth or a thousandth. Um, so keep those decimals until the very end. And the problem will tell you usually round to the nearest thousandth, thousandth that we're going to do at the very end. So we divide both sides by 142.86 to finish. And R is going to be 0 0.014. Doop, 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 doop. And that's it. Bye.